Hey there, welcome to 123 Edge Live at 123edgelive.com. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I want to apologize for the delay in getting started this evening. We've had some bandwidth issues, uh, some things happening on both of our ends uh, with, uh, with the stream. So I think we've got most of them ironed out. We may be flipping from camera to just audio if we need to adjust for some uh, lag or delay. Uh, but it seems to be going okay now, so uh, we'll go ahead and jump into it. First of all, if this is your first time to watch uh, 123edgelive.com, I'm James Chapman. Uh, I'm your host and owner, co-founder of 123edge. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're interviewing business leaders, thought leaders, strategists, social media experts, uh, people within that community that can help you to move your business forward. So we've had a variety of different guests and we have a variety of guests slotted to appear here in the coming weeks and months. So we're really excited about this series and hope that you get value out of it. We in fact know that you'll get value out of it if you uh, show up here and, and watch our different uh, different guests that we have on board. So tonight it's a great, I, great pleasure to uh, have with me tonight uh, Michael Butler Sr. Now Michael has a great story. He kind of started back in 2002 in the online space where he uh, launched his own social media agency where he was helping local business, medium-sized business to generate millions of dollars of revenue using social media strategies. Now guys, this is back in 2002 before there was really much of a uh, social media presence out there. Now he was started with MySpace as, a, as his primary vehicle for lead generation for these uh, for these companies, but he was using a keyword leverage strategy where he was taking keywords and leveraging those keywords across social media uh, platforms. Uh, hold on one sec. Um, so, so that he could generate leads for his clients. Well, he has a passion for authors and for books, and he's an author himself. Uh, so he decided to take those strategies out of the local business realm and take them to authors and publisher or authors uh, pri primarily and started utilizing these strategies to take uh, authors to best known best known status and bestseller status he's helped launch authors careers get them uh, gigs on CNN and Fox News and Dr. Phil and other major media outlets uh, and even took them to to movie deals so uh, lots of success there. He's got some great stories to tell. And tonight, we're going to really talk about uh, some major topics for authors specifically, but also for anyone wanting to launch a business on social media. We're going to cover some points in terms of strategy for social media, but also just some business strategy as well as some things you might want to consider if you're writing a book. So without any further ado, it brings me great pleasure to, uh, to welcome... Uh, Michael D. Butler. Michael, how are you tonight? Hey, I'm doing awesome, James. Thanks for the invite. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just great. Uh, it looks like we got our bandwidth uh, issues taken care of, so uh, let me give you some applause here. <laughs> and, um, so, Michael, you know, I know you're, you're kind of on a whirlwind tour right now. You're traveling around the country, meeting with authors and publishers, and uh, and kind of lining up a lot of different things right now. You're in the midst of a lot of launches. And uh, so thanks, first of all, for taking some time out of your schedule to meet with me on this special episode of one to 3 edge Live here on a Sunday. Uh, and uh, what do you got for us tonight? What are we going to be covering? Well, you know, I'm really excited, James. I'm really excited about that uh, bookshelf behind you. I want to get my hands on that bookshelf. i got to say that's one of the best-looking bookshelves I've seen anywhere, man. So kudos. Give yourself some applause for that. I know you're like, is that a virtual bookshelf you've got back there? That's a nice virtual bookshelf. I'm like, actually, it's a real one. He's like, are you in a law office? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. Well, yeah, I've, like you said, I've been on a tour. I'm in, I'm in the Northwest. I, I live in Vegas, but uh, this week I've been to Reno, to Portland, to Sacramento, meeting with authors and uh, working with multiple book launches coming up in the, the coming months and year. And it's just been a blast. It's been exciting. You know, I was. Um, like you said, I found this industry, internet marketing space and the online business space uh, back in 2000. It's just really passionate as a single dad of four boys. And, you know, I didn't have a, a big ad dollars, a big ad budget. And, um, you know, for a business owner that's wanting to get found, I really love what you're doing. I mean, we didn't have these tools. We didn't have Facebook integrating a Google Hangout on a Facebook page. I mean, it's just, just amazing what you can do now and streaming things from your phone. And, um, it, it, it's certainly exciting things. So um, 
What we found was for our clients, if they didn't have big ad budgets, then they certainly uh, need to understand what their social media keywords were, leveraging those keywords. Uh, we've had a lot of fun in the local markets helping the business owners get found, like you said, on MySpace through pay-per-click campaigns and, and really getting competitive um, if to find out what their competitors were using as keywords to get found. You know, you talk a lot about unique selling propositions and white space and blue oceans and how to stand out and how to create a wow experience for the customer and you know if I'm a new business owner a brand new business owner in a brand new market or if I'm a brand new author and I'm writing about a brand new topic that I've never written or spoken about there's some strategies that I can use we're gonna go into some of that um, how can a business owner or an author leverage keywords um, Somebody said that if the internet were a baseball game, we're in the top of the first. So the beautiful thing is you really can. I like um, that. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's beautiful. It's The internet's leveled the playing field. I, I've, I've said for years, and I like to say this, that the printing press brought us out of the dark ages. Uh, what will the internet do? You know, and so every every person, every man, woman, boy, and girl in developing nations, no matter their education, no matter their background, no matter if they're a part of a case system, uh, no matter what kind of persecution or opposition they've grown up in, with a smartphone now we can leverage uh, some real opportunity. So uh, traditional media, Ad Age says that traditional media is down 38 to 48 percent a year. That's newspaper, yellow pages, television, radio, direct mail, and, and the internet's up. And, Business owners know that, and the beautiful thing is using some of those ad dollars to uh, direct towards social media to some of the things you're doing here. It's a powerful, powerful tool to get found and, and really to measure it along the way. The beautiful thing is we're not just throwing mud against the wall and hoping something sticks here. It's a matter of... Um, really measured ROI where you know we can do Facebook ads now I know you do a lot of this James is you know for 27 cents a click or ten dollars and 27 cents a click if I'm a plastic surgeon or a personal injury attorney um, the beautiful thing is I can spend what I want to spend I can measure my clicks I know exactly how how well or how poorly my ad dollars are performing and it's all based on the keywords and the keyword competition yeah, so Michael, real quick here, I want to I want to stop you there because this is really important, and and I think a lot of people throw away uh, a lot of ad dollars uh, because they're, they're spending money on ads, but they're sending them to a spot that's really not designed to convert uh, that ad. There might not be congruency between the ad itself and then what they see when they land on the landing page if they have a landing page, um, and, and that all starts with your USP, your unique selling proposition, and really being clear about that. And I know that's something you talk about in along with your kind of blue ocean strategy. Can you talk about uh, your USP for just a minute? Because I know we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. We want to be able to take questions as well. Uh, talk about the unique selling proposition and, and why it's so important to, well, to start there and also to start with your offer. You know, to be able to convert somebody, um, it's not not enough just to have a pizza joint. You've got to have a unique story, you know. And the story, uh, if you're a direct selling company with a product, if you're a personal injury attorney, we, we mentioned that. If I'm a plastic surgeon and uh, I'm doing facial reconstruction surgery, I've got to create a unique story. Let's say I'm a financial advisor and maybe, uh, maybe I want to retire early and that's my goal. Well, tell us your story. Tell us why you got. Uh, into the business that you're in. Maybe you came from a, a uh, poverty-filled background and you want to change lives and as a financial advisor you uh, maybe you write a book for junior hires and uh, it's about thrift and saving money and investing money and you sponsor a little league team or a junior high team and you tell young people how to save money and be financially successful and that's the way you give back. So a unique selling proposition is the story that's told online while you sleep and when others are sharing your business connection uh, and how they felt, how they were treated from the product to the customer service when somebody walked in the door to how uh, quickly and how responsibly you follow up with emails and phone calls. It's the entire customer experience. But you got to find out where you're unique, where you are different. And it's like the uh, CMO of Ford said, it's not enough for us to brag on ourselves. 
We need other people talking about us. We need other people bragging on us. And, and James, that's the beautiful thing about social media and about the story. If we tell the story from the angle of we're not just the end consumer providing a utility, providing a utility that the customer's paying for every month. As an insurance agent, how can I stand out? How can I be different? You know, I grew up in a small town, and uh, my parents banked at First National Bank. I played baseball in Little League. But here's one thing First National Bank did in the small town. As a young boy growing up in town, I loved to get mail, right? I loved to go to the mailbox and have something with my name actually on it. That was my job was to get the mail, and I always brought my parents their bills. But I loved it when I got something with my name on it. And First National Bank, anytime my picture or my name was in the paper for making the honor row or hitting a double or making a double play, they cut it out of the paper, laminated, and they mailed it to me. Well, how do you think that made my parents feel? There were two other banks in town, but they didn't get my parents' business. My parents stayed with First National Bank until they retired and moved out of town. But I want you to know it made a difference. It was that unique experience. I mean, it's a bank, right? They cash checks. They receive deposits. What really made them different was they decided to create that wow factor for my parents and for me. Hey, we felt good about going there. Yeah. You know, that is so – that's such a great example, Michael, because it's those little things, like something little and distinct that, uh, that no one else is doing. That, uh, that's unique to you and really is a part of who you are and that's really when we say unique selling proposition a lot of people are thinking oh my tagline or you know uh, oh I provide really good customer service well no it's got it's not about that those are all givens those are things that you know are part of your business but your unique selling proposition is that added little something that's unique to you that you add that distinguishes you from everyone else in your market that really sets you apart that no one else can provide because it comes from you and who you are. Isn't that, isn't that kind of how you would say it? Yeah, and what I would say too, James, is so powerful to capture that personal testimonial. If you've got a customer that's, that's giving you a testimonial like that over lunch or coffee, just pull out your smartphone and say, you know, Tom, you know, Tina, do you mind just uh, sharing that testimonial? I would love to share it on our YouTube channel. Because here's the thing. Absolutely. We all hear testimonials every week, hopefully. But when you, when you get a letter, when you get an email, call that person and thank them for the testimonial, but then ask them for the permission to share it, to share it on the website, to share it on social media, to have a photograph of the happy customer. But I tell you, if you can get that, that video, it, it's, it's powerful. And I'll give you another example, James. Um, people are always asking about the ROI of social media. You know, what is the ROI of social media? Uh, oh, yeah. there's a, That's a big one for sure. Yeah, there's an attorney we were working with a few years ago, and, and he collected over a billion dollars for his personal injury clients, one of the most respected names in the state. And he said after two weeks on Twitter, he had a personal injury case come in the door. So if you can picture three intersecting circles, and one of them is your website, your SEO, the other one is the pay-per-click and the advertising that you're doing, maybe newspaper and traditional advertising. And the other one is your social media. You know, Google is more and more given the importance to what people are saying in the social space, right? Absolutely, absolutely, yep. And when those three, when those three spheres intersect, that sweet spot right in the middle is when a person goes from awareness to advocacy. See, the reason some business owners aren't busy is because it's not because they don't have a good product, it's because people don't know about them, right? And in order for somebody new to come into a business, it takes dozens of touch points. You know, it might take the direct mail piece and some of the other traditional things, but it takes three or four word of mouth referrals to come through social. You know, it takes a Facebook post, a testimonial on Facebook, it takes some social interaction. It yeah. takes some, you know, it, and that's a beautiful thing about these Google Hangouts. You know, it's third party credibility. Just like you interviewing me right now, it establishes credibility with what we're doing because you're talking about authors and business owners we've been able to help. So I tell, I tell business owners all the time, James, and I know you know this well, is tell your story, tell it well, but make it simple, make it unique so that other people can easily share it. You know, just like the attorney who after two weeks on Twitter had a personal injury case walk in the front door. What's the ROI on that? And uh, 
and talk about them again and again. Every time you get a microphone or you get an interview, tell a story of a client whose life you changed. That's really what it's about. Yeah, that's huge. And you know, they say stories sell facts or facts tell stories sell, right? And and the story is so important because it's it's we talk a lot about transparency, authenticity, and and integrity. And when when you have real people telling real stories about how their lives were benefited by what you did for them or provided for them, that resonates with people. And people can tell whether it's you know whether it's real or whether it's contrived or fake. And that's why social media and what we're doing here on Hangouts uh, is so powerful because like we're real people right here talking about real things and real stories. And with that in mind, I want to just take a quick break here to mention, guys, if you have any questions for Michael, drop them down in the comments below. You know, get your wheels turning. Think about something that you might be able to ask him that would uh, that would help. This is a great opportunity to get uh, the opinion of an expert. We're going to move into books here shortly. Uh, but before that, I have a couple of questions for Michael as we as we move through the interview here. Uh, so uh, make sure you um, you drop us a question, and we'll get to those towards the end. Does that sound good, Michael? Sounds awesome. I'll be watching the chat box. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so the very first question I've got for you, Michael, is um, how can a business owner or internet marketer leverage keywords online to get uh, really to get what they want or to, to drive them to a landing page. So the importance of keywords and knowing which keywords you want to use and how how, do you, how would you use those? I know we use them on Hangouts and on Facebook, but uh, what are some of the strategies you've been using? Yeah, so um, I don't believe blogging's dead. You know, a lot of people are saying blogging's dead. I, no, it, not at all. Yeah, it, if I'm a new business owner in a new market or if I'm going to launch a book around a topic and want to get paid to speak on a topic, uh, I'm going to start doing a weekly uh, or even a daily uh, YouTube or Google Hangout because the beautiful thing I know about these Google Hangouts, you're repurposing them. You know, you've got them on, you've got them on Google, you've got them on YouTube, you've got them on Facebook. So you're hitting the three major social media channels. And, and if I want to get known for keywords, and I've seen this again and again with our clients and our authors, my goodness, we had two authors uh, get movie deals as a result of leveraging keywords on social media and finding somebody that wanted to pick up their, their movie and, and raise money and do a movie short. I mean, um, it, it's exciting stuff. And at the very end, it reminds me, James, I'm going to give away an ebook called Twitter Success for Entrepreneurs. And I have some links on that and some practical tools. That's um, awesome. One one of the tools I don't mention in there is Manage Flitter. You know, I'm big on Twitter, and I wrote a book years ago, uh, Twitter Success for Authors, and, and that's what I'm sending to your listeners tonight. It's called Twitter Success for Entrepreneurs. It's an updated version. It includes this tool, this free tool I love. You know, most people use Hootsuite, and Hootsuite's awesome. I love it. But uh, Manage Flitter is awesome because it allows me, as a business owner or an author, or, or, or an internet marketer to target based on my keywords to see who's talking about my keywords, to see who's looking either for a home-based business or to see who's looking for uh, pet supplies. Maybe somebody's got a new golden retriever in Yakima, Washington, and if I'm a veterinarian, I want to know who just moved down the street in Yakima, Washington with a brand new golden retriever, right? And so these are the kind of things we need to look at in an area code in a zip code we can drill down and see who's recently married or who's downsized, who's who's an empty nester, who who raised their kids. You know, James, you and I connected in Seattle last year and we've stayed friends, we've stayed in touch because A, we're both dads, uh, B, we're both uh, grew up in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. We've got these commonalities, we've got these mutual friendships and these stories that overlap and plus we both love working from home. And we both love helping entrepreneurs get started in working from home. So the exciting thing to me is if I'm a business owner or an author, the power of telling the story. Now, James, when I was five years old, I stuttered. And I stuttered so bad that people made fun of me that I just totally went into my shell for six years. I didn't talk much because any time I tried to talk, I stuttered. And so I went into that shell. So I know how frustrating it is to have a story, an authentic, compelling story, wanting to communicate and not be able to get that story out. It's very frustrating. But one thing I learned how to, how to cope and how to eventually overcome, I hosted an imaginary TV show in my mind on my farm. I grew up on the farm in Oklahoma, and I did this full-blown 30-minute television production 
and I talked for 30 minutes. I was the producer, I was the host, I was the guest, and I when I cut to commercials, I did the commercials, and that's one way that I acted out and lived vicariously as somebody that didn't stutter. And so that's one of my stories I tell most of the time as a public speaker when I get up and talk because somebody can relate to my story. Many Americans stutter or have stuttered in the past can relate to somebody that's struggled with fear of public speaking and being up in front of a group. So I like to tell that story because it immediately lowers people's defenses and helps people connect with me. But it's also helped me connect with business owners who want to tell their story. So I always ask the question, what's the goal as a business owner? What's the goal as a potential author? What's the goal of my book? Um, how do I want to leverage my book to add credibility to my business? But the story is so important because facts are, James, if I tell a compelling story, I can sell to more people and the per ticket item is going to be higher because people do more business with those that they know, like, and trust. Absolutely. And we talk about that a lot, that know, like, and trust factor. And again, that's another uh, powerful component of what we're doing right now is people get to see us. They get to see who we are and we get to interact with you, you know, in real time with the, with the questions and comments in the chat box. And uh, so it really builds a, a connection. You know, we can connect with you and you can connect with us. So let me ask you a question, Michael, because when it, let's talk about books for a second, writing a book, because I know a lot of people who have a book inside of them and they talk about, you know, I want to write a book someday or they talk about I, I'm writing a book or I'm in the process of writing a book but they're not quite sure uh, how to complete that process and maybe they've done a little research or they've looked at some ways to get a book published uh, but it just seems like such a daunting task. So what would you say to those people that are just starting out that maybe have an idea for a book uh, and then what would you say to people that already have a book and are, are, are just don't know where to go to or what to do? So two questions there. For the brand new person, where would you start? Great question, James. You know, 85% of Americans say they want to publish a book in their lifetime, uh, whether it's their memoirs or whether it's their area of expertise to establish credibility. I mean, there are so many reasons to write a book. Um, if I'm a public speaker and I write a book, I can have backroom sales. Um, a lot of authors write a book with no intention of selling but just to hand it out as a virtual business card because it establishes credibility. Um, I've got a friend in Texas a number of years ago. He wrote a book uh, called How to Choose a Home-Based Business. And uh, years later, because he was the very first one to write a book with that title, was getting five, 600 calls a week of people inquiring uh, about which home-based business opportunity to choose and so he had to hire a girl full-time to manage the calls and direct them to the appropriate opportunity so James when it comes to building traffic on the internet and and now that Amazon is a major search engine just like Google bought YouTube if you want to be known for keywords particularly in a local market or if you want to be known for keywords around bullying cyber bullying or parenting or gardening or organic cooking uh, or whatever your keywords may be and financial advising and, and insurance um, brokers are very similar in the fact that they all offer a suite of insurance and financial products and everybody it's a product everybody's got to have yet nobody wants to talk about life insurance right so to really set somebody apart you become an author and if, if somebody's got the book, and the reason most people don't finish their book, James, is that perfectionistic attitude. Oh, to think, right. I'm not going to, it's kind of like putting out a YouTube video, right? People say, I'm going to do it, and 10 years later, they still haven't done it. It's because <laughs> I don't like the way I look on camera. I sound funny. It's the same way with the manuscript. When you give somebody your manuscript, it's kind of like the dream I used to have back in junior high going to school with my pajamas or, or my underwear on you know it's embarrassing but I wake up it's only a dream and, and it's kinda of that way with your manuscript what I tell people is have have eight or ten friends give you some honest feedback on your manuscript there's a ton of YouTube videos you can watch uh, book selling system is a free resource we launched last week at booksellingsystem.com there's a ton of free resources there on how to get your manuscript from your head to the paper to the computer and uh, you just gotta sit down and crank it out now if you're like me I dictate I, I love to shoot a, a YouTube video and then I convert that YouTube video into text and then I go in and, and touch it up and it's ready to go 
Awesome, awesome. The main thing is just do it, do it now. Set some deadlines for yourself and make it happen. You'll be glad you did. Yeah, you know, that that's great advice. And, you know, we talk about that in our mastermind. We run a couple of different masterminds. And um, one of the things we talk about is just the importance of taking action and just and just uh, doing it. And, and you know what? Just action of, 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 uh, of doing it uh, leads you in the right direction. And it might not take you to where you thought you were going in the first place, but it's going to reveal and open up doors for you that are going to take you to, to a really cool place. So that's the thing is um, start your book. That's the first step. If you already got a book, you already have a book that you've written or you're in the process of writing or finishing up, just keep working on it. But then, so say somebody has a book, Michael, and they're ready to publish, what, what would you recommend they do at that point? You know, that's a great question, James. I was just going to I was just gonna comment on the fact that you're going to help us get set up on our platform like you've got here. I, I love this Google Hangout integrated platform in, into Facebook because, A, everybody's on Facebook all day long if they're at work or on their phone. It establishes credibility. So, I anyway, kudos on that. So, I'm excited. I'm really excited because I've got a lot of authors and I've got a lot of book launch experts that are – Saying, hey, I want you to interview me, you know, and, and they're they're hearing about me launching this platform with you, so I'm really awesome. excited. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So you're saying, what would I really do um, if somebody's got a manuscript? Call me. I, I want to talk to them because it's a lot easier to get the manuscript to market than they might think. And the internet's changed everything, James. Everything you thought you knew about publishing, print on demand, and the internet's changed it. It's a lot cheaper than you could possibly imagine. It's just like. Uh, you know, the Bible was the first uh, book that came off the Gutenberg's printing press, and that took us out of the dark ages, right? And and so now the internet has 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 totally eliminated all this mystique and and uh, around the traditional publishing space. In the traditional publishing world, if you wrote a really awesome manuscript, um, you would go pitch it to a publisher, and hopefully they would pick you up. And uh, if they picked you up, they're going to own the manuscript themselves, and they're only going to pay you, you know, ten or at best fifteen percent on your manuscript. But they're going to own it for life. And so, what we do that's really different: we let you own the rights to your manuscript, and uh, we pay you seventy-five percent. And so, we'll give you a free phone consultation. Uh, James, I know you're going to give my contact information at the end. We've got a free ebook going out as well. But really, depending on where somebody's at on the manuscript. It's probably going to need some minor editing. The average book in America is 176 pages. It, you know, have friends and family uh, edit it, proofread it, do all that you can in getting it ready for market. But here's where most people make the mistakes, James, is when they're in their creative phase and, and, and the wheels are turning, they're just writing and writing. That's where the author wants to be. If you're stuck at writer's block, get out, get creative, get the manuscript flowing. Don't worry about editing it. And then later, hand it off to somebody that's a professional editor that can edit it for you right. Editing makes a huge uh, difference in, in the book cover. The, the number one thing is the book cover. I, I tell people that writing a book and becoming a bestseller is like marketing cereal in the cereal aisle. You know, uh, General Mills and, and Kellogg spin three times as much on the packaging as they as they do on the cereal. And so it's really about getting your photo op, getting your bio done, getting your endorsements and testimonials done, and, and then creating a killer, uh, kick-ass book cover. Sorry, Mom, for saying that. But it, it's true. You've got to have an awesome book cover. <laughs> yeah. Book covers sell books. Hey, Just like Michael. cereal boxes sell cereal. Yeah, you know, on that topic, I love what you what you're doing with 99 designs, and like um, I, I saw the book cover voting that you were doing for a book of one of your uh, one of your authors, and uh, and I had actually never seen that before, where you 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 put up uh, you basically you tell, well just tell us a little bit about that because I, there was a bunch of different book covers. You did it with a logo for your new company, and uh, and so they you get a bunch of designers throwing up their best work. And then the public votes on it and decides which one is best. And then uh, you decide ultimately out of the ones that they vote on which to choose from. And then you have your logo or you have your book cover. And man, the book covers in that book you were you were uh, you were working on looked awesome. I was so impressed. I mean, it looks like something you get right in the bookstore. Yeah, you know, um, 
and that's really the wave of the future. And uh, I'm I'm a little frustrated here. I'm trying to get my Beyond Publishing logo up, and it's got a picture of my bald head up, right? <laughs> it's really, it's really uh, crowdsourcing, right? You know what? I can get your logo up. Let me grab it here. Oh, can you? Oh, okay. Well, while while you're attempting that, I'll uh, I'm a little technically challenged. Here's the beautiful thing about that, James. What used to take five to ten grand for a New York publisher to do for an author. Uh, we can do now for for an author for as little ninety nine dollars online, and so when we have that consultation with the author, if they're a fiction author or a nonfiction author, you know maybe they had their cousin or their nephew do a cover design for them, they're just blown away because they get to work with nine of our top designers globally, and they get four hundred book cover design submissions. And what's so exciting about it? It's like you said, it's crowdsourced. But the other beautiful thing is the author gets to share, and we share with the author on our Facebook fan pages, on our Facebook page. My goodness, there are thousands of people, and potentially hundreds of thousands of people, that get exposed to an author's new book coming out, and maybe they've only got their first chapter written, James. That's the beautiful thing about it is. And uh, with this killer book cover, oh my gosh, it's all about marketing. So it does several things. It creates anticipation. You already own the URL, so you've got the keywords nailed down in the marketplace with the subtitle keyword. So you're going to be known as the expert in that area. You've got a killer book cover that your friends and family and new friends that you found that are just intrigued by this this uh, global voting, and it turns into a frenzy because you get two weeks to do it. And we've actually got our in-house graphic designer that that works on the day-to-day. To, to manage all of that. It gets really exciting, but the last few days it just goes crazy because these designers from all over the world, they want the job. And you, you definitely get the best of the best. Hold on, Michael. I'm yeah. uploading it right now. So keep talking while I, while I um, yeah. pop this yeah, up so, and show everybody yeah, your so basically, yeah, yeah, so basically what's exciting about it is once we have that that killer book cover that represents you and that oh, you as an author <laughs> that you as an author want. There's a big version of the, of the logo. <laughs> yeah, I'll just share my screen. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, then we build everything off of the book cover. I mean, the website, the Facebook, the Twitter, and uh, the Instagram, the Pinterest, the LinkedIn. It all comes back to the branded um, and it's a way, yeah, there it is. It's a way that you can have a Madison Avenue million dollar brand uh, as an author to really establish credibility without breaking the bank because you're leveraging this online resource called 99designs. Yeah, that, that's super cool. I love the BP, you know, for Beyond Publishing and with the Google. And I looked at some of them. I voted on a different one, actually, but then the, then you had a whole new wave of them come through. And uh, let me see if I can pull up the um, see if I can pull up uh, the uh, the book cover. You've got it posted here, don't you? Yeah, I do. Actually, if you go to uh, um, book book selling system, then we can scroll down and see it there a lot easier. Okay. Yeah. Oops. You know, you know, and this is the beautiful thing about feedback. Um, Facebook, the internet, there's a billion people on Facebook. Um, ask questions. Share, educate, share photos, do a poll, tell what other people are doing. Yeah, so speaking of which, um, let's see, I'm going to go off screen share. Hey, I want to I want to get to a couple questions we have here in the um, in the chat. So one of them is um, from Patty, and Patty asks, uh, "What genre you focus in for um, for your your publishing? Is there a particular genre you you uh, you focus in?" You know, ninety five percent of of our uh, books over the years have been nonfiction. Uh, but we do have a have a fiction label as well, so I mean we're able to help fiction authors. Um, 
what we found when I was marketing uh, business owners in the local market, I got a little bored with uh, being landlocked in a zip code and an area code, and and I started playing with SEO and then social media platforms as they were emerging. I got on Twitter at Michael Butler Senior uh, when Twitter launched, and and really was looking at there's so much in, new information coming out on Google every day that Google struggles to index all that information topically, but it leans heavily on on Twitter. As um, as a micro blogging site to help index authors topically, so that's one reason we've been uh, so happy and had so much fun. So my personal passion and my team has been nonfiction, but we do uh, we are able to help the fiction authors as well because really, James, think about it. It's about creating buzz. It's about doing multiple book launches a year for an author. Once you set a launch date based on the editorial calendars, we do a pre-launch, a launch, then a post-launch. So, uh, for example, um, if I, if we're launching a book, and we are, we're launching several books around the first of the year and the New Year's theme around wellness and, and around uh, one one particular book, Cinderella at 70. It's about dating again uh, for for women online dating over 50, right? And so we're going to launch that book in February around Valentine's Day, but it's also going to have a pre-launch uh, around Christmas and New Year's. So when I look topically at the editorial calendars, certain books do better uh, at certain times of the year, but then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend 12 months or six months prior to a book launch attracting potential joint venture partners like book bloggers and book reviewers that have written book blogs and book reviews about books and particular genres. So when we sit down with an author and have that free initial consultation and look at the manuscript and have our editorial team look at the manuscript, we're going to know if we've got something here and then we're going to say, what's the goal of the book? You know, what are some similar books and, and, and how were they launched and what can we do that's totally out of the box, unique selling proposition, blue ocean strategy, to just totally blow things up and go crazy on Amazon, make it a bestseller, and then make it a bestseller in the bookstores. That's awesome, Michael. So um, I got a I got a question for you. Uh, first of all, guys, um, we're stick around because we're about to drop the link for uh, for Michael's um, ebook for Twitter. So, Michael, first of all, talk a little bit about what is a blue ocean strategy exactly for those that may not be aware of that term. And then I want to ask you about. Um, uh, about Twitter and you kind of just a quick, you know, maybe a quick tip or two about uh, how you use Twitter. But tell us about Blue Ocean Strategy. Yeah, well, going back, you, you know, the book Blue Ocean Strategy was a bestseller, and it, uh, it it's really about identifying new industries and niches within new industries. And one of the companies he talks about in that book a lot, Blue Ocean Strategies, is is Yellowtail as a wine, and and lowering the price and opening up an entire new market of people that were going to join a fine wine that he could have charged twice as much as he did, but instead he became a billion dollar company quickly by opening it up to an entirely new market. And so it's really by thinking non-traditionally, by thinking outside the box and saying how can we market this direct, you know we used to say in the old world of publishing before the internet that if we could get 3,000 books into the marketplace that would create a viral tipping point that enough people would be talking about the book enough people would be sharing the book that the book could go viral so now with the internet the algorithms the formulas are always changing now that we have a global opportunity we've got more of an opportunity but we've got more competition so we've got to look for that white space and when I say white space that's a term designers use to create more wow factor just like I paused right there, that was white space to create more of a wow factor. And so if I'm going to create a wow factor, maybe I don't even have a tremendously unique product, but if I put enough white space around it, and get the lighting just right, and dress it up a little bit, and get enough other people talking about it, then we can make this thing go viral. See, most best-selling books aren't the best manuscripts, they're not the best written books, they're not the best edited books, they're not the best story. That so if we can true. get a fairly compelling story out of an author and put a great book cover on it and decide what angle we're going to pitch it to the media, that's what's so 
unique. All my time in direct sales, James, I said to people, don't argue based on price or product. You need to differentiate yourself. Become an author, become a speaker, adopt a nonprofit. You know, when I was running my marathon back in 2008, I said to myself, all my bucket list was to run a marathon. In 2007, I says, oh my gosh, I'm 39 and a half. I better start training to run this marathon before 40 and get it off my bucket list. Well, point number one, give yourself a year to train for a marathon. Shin splints are very uncomfortable and painful. I only gave myself six months, but I did it. But one of the most exciting things about the last three miles of the marathon was all four of my sons ran that last three miles with me. And it was one of the great moments of my life. But a real challenging thing in the training of the marathon was I had to be out of town on one of my long training runs. Now, training runs are when you go out and you run 18 miles one week, and the next week you run 20 miles, and then the next week you take the weekend off, and the next weekend you run your marathon, and that's how you train for a marathon. Hmm. Well, on my 18-mile week, I had to be out of town speaking and had to do my 18 miles in the gym. And I up till then, I had that six months, I was training with a running group. So if you're going to do something major in your life, you need a team around you. You need, like you talked about your mastermind, you need a team of mastermind friends that can help you, encourage you, hold you accountable, call you on your BS, and push you on the greatness, right? That's absolutely that was the hardest mastermind. Miles, that was the hardest 18 miles I did running on the treadmill in the gym. Now, the next week, I did my 20 miles so much easier than I did my 18 miles because I was with my friends running it. But the point of that is get the people in your life that are going to push you to greatness, declare your goal, and say, I'm going to write my book by this date, and here's my goal for my book. It's going to open doors for me to speak. Or I'm going to give it away as a virtual business card. I'm going to print 500 copies so I can give it away um, to open doors for business and, and get new new customers that way. You know, Michael, maybe uh, you should think about starting a mastermind for authors or for new authors because that's a that's a great idea and a, a great way to to help people, encourage people, give them that uh, that that push and that boost to to have them uh, do what's required to make it happen. So, <laughs> totally. you guys, uh, I just want to say. Uh, We've dropped a link to the Twitter, uh, the Twitter ebook, so you can go ahead and refresh. Just refresh the page, and that button will pop up. You can grab that. You can also register for future One Two Three Edge Live events. We have some awesome guests lined up, and if you found value in what Michael sharing tonight, let us know. Drop us a comment. We really appreciate that. If you have any other questions, we do have a couple of more questions I want to get to Michael, and we're, we're we've got about ten minutes left. So, uh, but before we do that, um, we just dropped the link to your Twitter ebook. Uh, tell us what people are going to find in that ebook, and then maybe give us a couple of hints on some some Twitter strategies. Why do you use Twitter? What's the big deal about Twitter? Well, you know, like I said, Google uh, leans heavily on Twitter to index content topically. And one of the fastest ways, if you just Google your name, go Google, Google yourself right now, or go Google your competitor's keywords. One of the quickest ways to get found, Google looks at, you know, Bing and Facebook have a partnership, but Google, Google Plus, Google looks at Twitter and loves Twitter. So if you Google your name or you Google your keywords in your local market, and you realize that if if somebody's searching for what you provide, how are they going to find you? All right. And a lot of people do a Google search and like, well, see, I come up. Well, the truth is, you come up because uh, your cookies on your computer knows who you are and knows what websites you've been to. But if I'm in a different zip code and I'm on a different IP address and I'm searching for the same keywords, are you going to come up? And so the beautiful thing is. Here's what you want to do. I give some basics in that book on how to connect with potential joint venture partners, how to get people talking about you. I give some Twitter basics. I show some great free Twitter tools to use like manageflitter.com and hoopsuite.com and how to use those free tools to leverage keywords and to connect with influencers and even to drill down into a zip code and find the top influencers that you need to know, that you need to be talking to. Awesome. Because if you want if you want somebody to give you a shout out on social media, you don't just expect it to happen. You go out there and give them a shout out first and say, hey, thanks for this great blog post. And then after you do that three or four times, they start taking note and they're like, who is this guy? Maybe he's got something on the ball. Maybe I should look at his stuff. Next thing you know, you're speaking on stage with him and doing a joint venture partnership or even yeah. co-authoring a book with him. 
That's awesome. Awesome. Cool. Hey, thanks, Michael. That's a great. So, guys, you can download that Twitter ebook right now. Just click the link below and the button. Uh, if you don't see the green button that says Get Twitter Success, just refresh your page. You'll see the button right there. Uh, pop it uh, pop it in, and, and you'll get that. This will take you A to Z. Uh, again, we're not selling anything here, so you're just going to get some great success. Um, you'll get on the one, two, three edge uh, list for future uh, future events that we're going to be holding and future uh, guests. So definitely want to uh, be a part of that. Um, Michael, let's jump to a few more questions here. Let's keep them quick so we can get through them and uh, get everybody taken care of here. So I want to get to Melody. Or let's see, uh, let's see Melody's question. She asks, uh, "Do you use any software when creating your manuscripts, uh, like uh, Scriber?" Uh, Scrivener, I think, or uh, I'm not familiar with that one. But uh, what what do you use when you're writing, actually writing your book? You know, when when I when I'm personally doing it, I just use Evernote and uh, and Word doc. You know, when when I get a manuscript from an author, I share it with our editorial team. I know there's a couple out there. I'm not real technically savvy on the manuscript writing side, but for me personally, I do my manuscript in Evernote. If it's in Evernote or Word, then you're good. Awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. So let's see. We've got another one. Uh, oh, and by the way, I use uh, Google Docs, uh, you know, for a lot of writing, and it's really cool because you can collaborate with people, and people can leave awesome. notes. And yeah, it's a great collaborative tool, and it's free, and you just use it in in Drive. I'm actually working on a new product uh, on how to use Google Drive to drive your business forward. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming out very soon. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, the stuff we've been doing with Google Drive and, and, and integrating Google and Facebook together and, and really leveraging, as you said before, leveraging the strengths of both platforms is extremely powerful. Using a lot of the same things you're talking about, Michael, where you're taking keywords, uh, but you're not just getting the SEO value out of a video or out of the keywords, but you're also getting the social signals combined with the search engine and they just enhance and amplify one another and it's just awesome and that's the value of these hangouts too because Google loves to rank its own content right video yeah. is powerful so we just hit so many yeah so many so many key points here so okay hey James you're gonna love this let me throw this in uh, I just met a librarian from Colorado who said their entire school district is all set up on Google Docs I thought you'd want to know that oh yes yeah, you're going to love it. So I, I totally kudos to that. Very cool, very cool. Okay, so Don Jordan asks, um, oh, wait a second. I'm just refresh refreshing. Um, okay, Don Jordan asks, are books you launch only digital or both digital and print versions? They are digital and print. So we do uh, the top online bookstores, um, you know, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Books a Million, iTunes, but also print. You know, we pro we provide some of the best printing prices in America. We're very competitive. A lot of people say we're the best value out there when it comes to printing your manuscript and bringing it to market. Obviously, the it, it's it's quantity discount, so the more you print, the better. But on any given day, we put it out there to the six top printing presses in America, James and 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 Don, and get get you a great printing price. If you're going to do a thousand copies or five thousand copies, people are really surprised. They come to us even from other publishers, and they're like, you know, I've been paying four to five dollars a book to print this, and a lot of times we'll give them a bid, and it's it, it's a dollar or two, or even under under a dollar. You know, a ninety cent book that you sell for fifteen dollars is pretty good ROI as a business owner. Or even if you're going to give it away as a as a virtual business card, a ninety cent book is pretty powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Hey guys, I've had some comments that they've refreshed the page and not getting the the button. So uh, if you're on Chrome or Firefox, try to avoid Explorer if you can when you're uh, using Google Hangouts. Uh, but if you're on Chrome or Firefox, and you just hit the refresh uh, your browser link. That button should pop up. For those of you that that can't do that, and that's okay. I just dropped it in the comment button. Uh, and so in the comments um, above, you should see uh, you should see it there as well. So I just dropped the link in there. Um, let's see. I wanted to make sure we get. Oh, you know, back before we actually went live, we had um, we had a question from. From George, let me get let me scroll down to that because I wanted to get to that. He asks about uh, about how can he use his ebook to generate leads. Um, so do you want to talk about uh, want to talk about that, Michael? How do you use your ebook? 
Yeah, the, yeah, so that's great. And we talk about that a little bit in the book. And, James, I shared the link there in the chat box, the bit.ly link with your name uh, for the link to the ebook. Great. So um, that that's a great thing to do. You know, if you've already got an ebook, um, question is, is it already on Amazon? Uh, does it look the way you want it to look? For example, uh, I, I created a different book cover for this webinar and, and James's followers here because before I did Twitter success for authors and Twitter success for salespeople. And so this one I just customized for James and the group here and, and updated it, but also embedded the link. So one way I, I recommend doing that is having your book cover, and you can go to Fiverr or anywhere, go to Graphic Designer and have somebody design, take your book cover and create an HTML opt-in form with, with MailChimp or Aweber or Constant Contact so you can have the opt-in form and your free ebook on your website in exchange for an email. So it's all about growing the list. I know James is, is, is really in a mastermind teaching people how to grow their list, and that's awesome. So if you've got an ebook, use it and, and I'm a bad example of this our, all our sites are being rebranded and re going live next week but on all of our sites we're gonna have that email opt-in by the end of the next week it does take a little bit of work to do it but it's powerful because uh, you can always update it and you can even change the embedded media uh, if, if it's live on Kindle um, and just keep it evergreen and fresh awesome awesome hey uh here is another, it's kind of along the same questions, uh, question with George. Uh, he says, what's the best way to write a book once you have an idea? And we did talk a little bit about that. And then he says, is Amazon the best place for him to, uh, to really uh, sell his book? And I know you talked a little bit about that as well. Uh, Amazon's a good starting place. It definitely is a good starting place. So start now. Uh, it's never going to be perfect. You're always going to find some typos in it. But if you run it by some editorial types, um, what I say is shoot the manuscript to us. We'll give you a proposal, and uh, we'll give you some great information. It's not a high-pressure sales thing. We'll give you the facts. I mean, to actually have it proofread, you're only going to spend about 150 bucks with us on an average size book. Um, to get it up in the online stores, we're going to put it in the top online stores for you for uh, for a hundred dollars for a book that's less than a hundred pages. So it really makes sense to get your ebook up, to get it out there, to get it edited, and to get that killer, kick-ass cover design that really represents your brand appropriately. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, hold on one sec. Uh, we've got just want to make sure we get the rest of these before we wrap it up here, guys. We're at the top of the hour. Um, you link which a bunch of okay. So yeah, the the link I I think um, we'll we'll get the link in there correctly. Sorry, I'm trying to do too many things at once here with the with the link. So ignore that link. I'm going to delete that post uh, because it's not the right one. And then um, uh, you dropped the link in there, didn't you? Oh, I put it in the chat box. Did you want it in the uh, in the hangout here? No, no, no. You got it in the chat box. That's where we wanted it for sure. So, um, okay, cool. cool. Yep, it's a Bitly link with your name. Yeah, awesome. Uh, okay, well, guys. Um, hey, if if we um, if if you're not able to get the book, what I'll do is I'll shoot out an email to everyone that uh, was on the Hangout tonight and make sure that link is in the email. And then I will drop the correct link here in the comments once I can uh, wrap things up here and get focused on doing it the correct way. So uh, it's just uh, Michael and I here tonight. We don't have anybody behind the scenes. Uh, you too can host your own live Google Hangouts and put, put them on Facebook for search engine traffic, for social signals, for all those great bonus uh, benefits for actually producing your own event. Uh, it's great honor to have you here tonight, Michael, and thank you so much. I, I want to have you on here again because this has been awesome and just a great content, uh, great information, and uh, you know, I, I'm sure you have more you could share, right? You know, thanks. It's been a blast. We certainly do. We could drill down more into the technical side of the writing or into the book launch side of the marketing or the pre-launch side and creating an Amazon bestseller. So it'd be a lot of fun and uh, love the platform and love the branding and everything you're doing. So like I said, very excited about launching our own platform with you and, and creating some of our own mastermind for writers and authors and that kind of thing. So James, thanks so much for having me on and, and I hope everybody enjoys the ebook. 
Hey, thanks so much once again, Michael, and thanks to everyone here for, for joining us. Don't forget to share uh, this page. Click the button up at the top and share it so people can get back here and watch the replay. You can come back to 123edgelive.com over the next few days, watch the replay. Also watch your email because uh, if you've accepted the, uh, the email registration, uh, then you'll get updates for our future guests, and I've got some really awesome guests uh, lined up. One guy... Uh, in the network marketing industry that's going to share some really powerful strategies for blowing up your network marketing team if you're in that business if you and it doesn't matter what company you're with this is company agnostic but just some strategies and some skills that are very very powerful in that space and then we've got some other um, other people in the kind of the mindset and, and really setting goals and intentions for your business um, lots of really cool guests coming up here so uh, watch your email because you'll see the um, You'll see the uh, the updates and when we have those scheduled coming up. So with that, guys, I want to thank you once again for joining us here at 123edgelive.com. I'm James Chapman. Thanks again, Michael Butler. We will see you guys on the next Hangout. Have a great night. Hey, thanks.